What's up, Reloaded Listers? Uh, I just want to take a real quick second here at the start of the show. When we recorded the show yesterday, pretty much everybody didn't like the, the fire resist hard requirements uh, and the insta-death if not hitting those hard requirements. I did like it, but I couldn't really put into words... It wasn't even like even really sure why. I just knew I liked it, and my brain was fuzzy. I couldn't put it into words. But the main thing is, is I like it just for the fact that it makes everybody do it. Now, let me give you a scenario. Back in 2019, 2019, Nax Aramis. We are we have saffron pretty much on farm, but everybody still needs to use. Use use frost res resist. However, a handful of people could get away with not using fire resist, and these greedy people would do it every week instead of trading off with other people, and that's not cool. Like they would do it, you know, sneakily without the raid leads permission. Yada yada yada. And that just sucks. Like, I don't like that type of mentality, that non-team play. And I think the fire resist hard cap stops that type of greedy behavior. And that's kind of where I sit on it. But uh, there's a lot more talk on the show. So I hope you guys enjoy the show today. And uh, thank you and bye-bye. Welcome to Warcraft Reloaded, a podcast brought to you by Mash Those Buttons, covering World of Warcraft Classic and its community. I'm Bobby, also known as Blazin Bob, and we're not joined by Mel, aka Melarina, today. She's uh, she just wasn't feeling it, and she, you know, needed a break, and she needed to get some work done before she goes out of town tomorrow. So I apologize for that, guys. But we have a big cast. We have uh, starting from left to right, top to bottom. We have I am Lubes. How you doing, brother? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And then we also have the crazy man, San Medina. How you doing? Home boys. <laughs> and thank you for watching. That's all yeah. it is. But I always think about when I think about you because you say it to <laughs> your video. <laughs> uh, and then we have Vendetta underscore underscore TV. Ven, how you doing? My fingers are a little swollen, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm great. Yeah, I've been, yeah, my wrists are a little messed up, but, you know, it's gaming, it's gaming. But, uh, yeah, and last but not least, we have Yes Way. How you doing? Hey, Bob, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. All right, so ev everybody here is in Swamp, and uh, we've all done, I believe, well, three of us did my raid last night, and then the other two did two different raids, I believe, so we got some... Oh, and Ven's doing his raid tonight. So we got we have a we have a few different uh, per perspectives. So I think it's going to be a good show. I like to I like to remind everybody at the start uh, that we do this this show live on twitch.tv slash Blazin Bob. That's B L A Z Z I N B O B. Uh, I'd like to thank our tank patrons in Croxford, Turtle Whale, and Braxton. Um, if you need to find any of our links to anything, uh, Patreon, Discord server, the YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, whatever, you can go to warcraftreloaded.com and get that info. If you want to leave us a voicemail, it is 816-866-1066 or go to speakpipe.com slash warcraftreloaded. Um, we're going to start the show off with a voicemail. I... Did not pick a comment of the week, so I don't know. Maybe if one of the guests finds a comment, 
that they like from last week's video, they could just... Uh, oh, I'll do that. Okay, Sand's going to find us a comment of the week while I'm going through this. Then we're going to do... We didn't pull up my comment last week, Bob. <laughs> then, then we're going to do uh, what we've been doing besides Molten Core this uh, week. And then we're not really going to mess with the news this week. It's going to be a little bit different. We're just going to kind of talk about our... Uh, our time in MC and talk about Swamp's uh, run with the uh, with the main speed run raid. They got 19th world first, which is pretty cool. And we'll talk about our our runs. Uh, we have someone here that did Heat two. The other of us did Heat one. Swamp's main raid did Heat three. So we're gonna talk about that. We're just gonna just gonna talk. That's all it's really gonna be. And so yeah. Buckle up, and I hope you guys enjoy the show. Let's start off with this first voicemail, guys. Hey, it's Pally Former again. Uh, just had a question about how you think MC is going to work with all the new mana users that are going to be in melee range on Ragnaros specifically. I haven't seen any posts about it, but I remember back in the day, like, you couldn't have a Red Paladin in there. You couldn't have an Handsome Shaman in your melee group. Uh, like if you were a ret, that was like the beginning of you were forced to heal, you know. Uh, but now we got melee hunters, we we got rets, we got enhancement shamans, we got warlocks that tank, we got paladins that tank. How do you think that's going to work out with the mana users on on like that specific fight, or any any new changes you think are going to happen because of the classes that have changed and are now in positions that they weren't in prior? classic era all right later all right well i think he's just asking about how the group die dynamics are going to be changing and it's it's a little weird i'm assuming all elias is going to need a, a paladin in every group and now you might just have a ret paladin in the melee group instead which is better you know like the ret now gets the buffs same with shaman you're going to want you know one in each group probably a tank in one of your melee groups probably a enhance in the other group but what do you guys think like there's there's a lot i mean you can you don't have to have hunters in the melee group anymore it can benefit them some with their pets and traps and different things from, from what i understand but yeah like you you get their buff raid wide because it's now attached to heart of the the lion so do you guys have any uh, thoughts on group compositions i mean having played classic era for the past few years after uh i quit wrath um you always still had enhanced shamans and rep paladins you just split them off from the group you never had um you never had them sitting together with all the warriors and rogues and same with metal locks. You had paladin tanks sitting with the warrior tanks. You didn't split them off. You just kept them all together. Um, I really don't see the need. And people are already splitting them up. So, and you don't have many melee hunters. Melee hunters not really that great. So most of the hunters are playing ranged, so they can get the true shot aura. And like you said, it's already put into the raid wide buff. So I think it's, I think it's all perfectly fine. Any thoughts from anybody else? Yes, way. Thank you. It's great. Put together a lot of groups, right? Yeah, I think Ben's point of you had the melee kind of at the end of the spiral of the tank on the opposite side. The melee mana users would always just kind of be in between both of those sections, kind of sitting where the off tank was. And that was far enough where the melee could continue to die their mechanics, but not get um, have the mana effect hit the melee or the tank. Um, I don't think we ever really ran Ret Paladins in when I was in Vanilla, so we didn't have that issue. But and I didn't play Horde, so we didn't have Shamans. So I don't know if anyone played Shamans back in the day or played Horde and has a better perspective of what Enhanced did with their totems. I feel like people really trying basically just didn't really have Enhances. They had, they had at least from what Melderon and... and uh, them used to tell me is they would run uh they would have their chamois like either be you know heels or elemental or elemental would help with heels and switch and switch gear this was before this was 2019 when we didn't have uh dual uh dual spec so 
they will they would have them just basically kind of be a hybrid spec and just swap between gear based on the pull if they need more heals or they need more dps for a dps check as far as i understand i could be wrong especially because in uh 2019 you didn't have enough gear to go the um improved totem spec as a wrestle shaman you mm -hmm. went deep resto because you needed mana tide so later on people started going improved weapon totem so you didn't need the enhanced shamans so but you still wanted some enhance did just you? for the uh two melee groups and i mean that's what i made i made a shaman I've, I've been healing for the past six years i don't know why i want to do it again but i've been having a lot of fun with all the new changes and yeah uh you don't really see many rets i have some friends that play rets now still in it in the classic era but you have all the gear well, what about they, sad though um I'm not, I'm not playing Alliance yeah, anymore. Yeah, none of us are playing so, Alliance. I mean, I, I still hop over to my Druid every once in a while, but he's not. He's still over 50. I just hop on and do some daily stuff. And, but other than that, I haven't. I might level him up, check it out. But I feel like they're just going to split them off in the groups. So There's still a lot of group-wide buffs. Like your melee groups want a warrior at each of the groups, although the Warriors world buff does go raid-wide, I believe. Is that a true statement or, yeah it does okay. but yeah there's i mean there's different things then of course you want wind fury but you could kind of on horde you can kind of like you know i'm assuming two ferals are a absolute must for uh for out for all for alliance but you could have you know just one feral you know, it'd be completely fine on on Horde. So it. I don't think I've raided with a feral DPS. How are they right now? Are they in a bad spot? Pretty good. They are like top They're three right now. Okay, I haven't seen one yet. We have. They even got the Yoi now, which is okay. Yeah. They... Mm -hmm. I, think I knew they were a, crushing. Uh, a photo yeah. Photo of a feral druid with hand of rag already. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And so nice. I imagine that's gonna. I'd hope you know. I, did if Hand of Rag isn't good now, I'm just totally giving up on that weapon. It's just never going to be viable <laughs> I mean, anymore. It's, it's more of a... If I looked at the stats. It looks more like it's going to... be. I uh, should be more prior towards a tank, feral tank. Yeah, because yeah. it looks like the stats are much better for the bear. Which and is don't kinda, forget kinda that bear scale of weapon damage. Yeah, I don't know if the bear don't. does it, but have you seen the cats when they do have yeah, it? The, they they are like... A, the they're change. on fire, literally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really cool. I'm almost mm -hmm. saying that they do, but I haven't seen any pictures yet. I haven't seen pictures of the bear. Where is the bear? Where, where's if, our viewers? Uh, we need a picture of a bear you know, a on fire. fire. Bear. Yeah, that's I, I. You would assume they would do it for both, especially if oh, you're like saying fire, it's better for tank. Boomkin. Who was uh, Eben Hart was asking for that in one of his his videos, and I was like, but the stats on it. I looked at the stats, and I couldn't find any reason why a boomkin would wear it. What about a seal? Can we get a a fire seal, seal fire form. seal fire that would be wild <laughs> you just swim in lava no it's damage in lava steam in the whole time instead of yeah, or wow. no damage in lava no That's damage a cool in lava idea. would be sick yeah listen to this man um I, you're not I was gonna a, mention you're not that, a druid um, main anymore Sam Medina you can't say that you don't know that yet okay you, <laughs> maybe I want Thunder Fury and Sulfuras what you gonna do about oh it my. I'm gonna come <laughs> yeah. take it from you oh my shaman <laughs> Well, then Back there's the, the sword that dropped too. Uh, the Thunder uh, Fury. no, the sword that dropped for us in our our raid last last night after off of Domo. Kev oh, the got rogue it. quest, yeah. But uh, that like yeah. that puts your rogue on fire every time you use uh, Blade Fury. So unfortunately, yeah. though, it's not going to be usable for mutilate rogues. It'll be usable for the back for the backstab spec. And then they're supposed to be tanking, you know, that's what it's supposed to be for tanking. I didn't or... even get my major domo loot. Our our raid reset, like, there's some like global reset. Everyone DC'd, and that was right after we killed the boss. That's what I we heard. rolled back and we lost all the loot. We had the spell power enchant in that too. It was terrible. Yeah. But you were saying, yeah. uh, yes, way back to the, what do you say, back to the, the, oh, yeah. I was gonna question. say just in vanilla, um, I think all shamans were pretty much resto and excluding the ones i mean they would drop wind fury and then um all the paladins were, i believe were all healing as well so that wouldn't have been an issue then and then in classic i want to say the same i think i only remember paladins being healers 
um, because they still hadn't fixed the seal of was it righteousness the their ability to tank the seal of command I think was still not programmed until after next Ramit, so they weren't able to tank yet. So and then shamans I know in classic all used. Uh, you needed a bunch of shamans in each group for Wind Fury, but I think the same thing. They were all healing from afar. I don't remember too many Ellie's in the speed runs. It was mostly all. Ellie. You never had Ellie's. Right. Just yeah, the, they would just kind of do any damage. Right. There was just no damage. So it was really just, I think it was just resto shamans with the imp totems. Um, so to, if, I don't know if we ever answered this person's question, but it's going on now. Yeah, I think we just spread them out. And I don't think there's too many mana casters in melee that's going to cause a problem. But I would guess you just have them, you know, just change specs for the rag fight i know our hunter was struggling with trap range i know i was struggling when i went ellie to get in range of the flame shock so it i think positioning just has to be a little bit more precise now with if you're going to do 20 people i think especially if you want to like be run it everyone's gonna have like a very set area um with distance um you want to have a fast collapse but um you also don't i mean people were getting knocked back in on behind the melee really far which was out of range of our healers and that was kind of i was thinking about that how we got to really position somebody you got to have like two healers on each side because if one healer gets knocked you need the other healer to heal them until they can get back while also like off healing whoever like it's the melee or the tank um it was just like a little tricky so i i liked the challenge uh of it but also yeah, i don't really find any mana users going to be an issue in melee also a little bit of education to the melee if you know if anybody goes back to the to the vods from last night on on rag, I was generally in the top for the attempts we did. I was generally in the top three DPS. I moved back for every knockback, so staying in for the knockback is definitely a DPS loss rather than just walking out. And it is a little weird because it gets to a point, and then sometimes you could wait out for a like a what feels like an a an eternity before he actually does it because he doesn't do it on cue you just know when he is able to do it next and then it's kind of random within a few seconds so but i will i will say seeing the people get popped over was my was a nice cue to go back into dps <laughs> but you should be just coming out for that unless you're a warrior a warrior if you have you know char or inter what uh not charge, but the other one up. Intercept? Yeah, you could just, if you're quickie, e enough, intercept right back to it. Or rogues could switch to shadow step and use that also. Um, but, you know, you, you, you just need to move out of it. And I think it helps a lot because you also take a good amount of, of damage when you get popped up too. But yeah, I think like groups... Pretty much everything's viable. I mean, at the moment, like, like except for like frost mages, are well, I, I think arms warriors might even be viable. I, I don't even know, but hell no, arcane mages, though, frost good. mages. Yeah, fury, fury looks decent. Yeah, like I know I am a warrior and I am compelled to complain in the name of warriors, but they are doing pretty good. Yeah. And hand shamans are doing great too, and they just gotta be careful. Especially with Hodge. I've been watching uh, one of the guys I'm reading with tonight. Just 15k damage right off the bat. And no tank could pick that up. And they just get one shot. So. Yeah, and then, you know, you can kind of take a Happen chance the with a Ram Rogue, right? You can open up big time. And if you screw up, boom, vanish. You know, you're okay. But Warriors don't have, I don't think, anything... See, it's weird because I could say everything for Vanilla, but in Sod, I'm not sure about everything. Like, Warriors might have something that can bring down threat. I don't even know because I haven't played one since Phase 2. So. Yeah, I think I saw Enhancement Rogues this, in the first Warcraft logs that came out. Enhancement Shamans and Rogues were top two, I think, in just pure output DPS. So they seemed pretty strong, I think. You know what the coolest thing? If you watched one of Sans... Uh, videos on dps he, he could point out the best rogues and the best warriors right now are doing the same damage like warrior is just really hard to play and you need 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 gear so 
And keep in mind, they are heat three logs. So like uh, the warriors are heating like wet noodles even more than rogues because they need to get their heat cap, which I don't know if they even got. Like all, all that stuff. You know, like the top 10% of warriors is about that the same as the top 10% of rogues, even though the average is really bad because of fire res. So it's going to get a lot better as soon as people get tier one with fire res on it. Uh, the warrior is going to climb up really fast. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, well... Uh, thank you for your voice, your uh, voicemail. Did you find us a comment of the week there, San? You didn't even look, did you? Oh, yeah, the comment of the week. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so people were telling me to to focus, and uh, he, he did the opposite of focusing. <laughs> so, yeah, I got, I got this comment over here. Well, first of all, I want to bring up something, Bob. Like I said something last week, and you didn't pull it up for the comment of the week, and I will and I will state it right now. I said that as a fan of this podcast, I was very disappointed that last week's episode didn't have any men kissing on it. So I don't know if you want to correct that right now. You're going to bring us justice. <laughs> I don't uh, think an episode's no. ever had what? men kissing. Gosh, ding it. <laughs> Very well, like the comment, the comment I wanted to pull out. Sam, do you want to kiss? <laughs> sure. See, see, Bob, see, this is like a go-getter right there. This yeah, is like, but, like, like. Oh, no, somebody... I'm going to get some, uh, some Hershey kisses out of my fridge. I, <laughs> I, I'm yeah, not kissing. Sand, but, but whiskers, Sam. Just can't get past the whiskers. Sorry. Uh, I, I am a Latin American. I don't have any <laughs> other type of beard. Like when it grows up to this tall, it just stops growing. <laughs> right there, it's a hard stop. All right, did you actually get us though? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Read who it's. Uh, this uh, comment from is by Cianitori. What? Nothing. Go ahead. This comment is by Cianitori. If Sol wasn't a seasonal thing, I would like to see the prices of their tier gear double at the vendor, but absolute slap, absolute slam dunk of a change. Kinda thought they would release it like that in the first place, based on how they talked about it in the announcement video. And I wanted to pull that up because I feel that personally, and even though I'm going to get mad if they nerf it now, even though I didn't even farm it, like I got like a bit of a personal problem with how they, they run Sol. And yeah. that. You're talking about the yeah. tier zero stuff, right? 0 0.5, yeah. Yeah, it would have been nice if those drop tokens because, you know, when you're trying to get your chest and like eight other chests can drop from it, you just like, eee. I mean, it's 1,400 gold for gear that you're going to, unless you're like a class that has a really good set bonus, you're not going to even use it. You know, it's like two weeks and it's over again. It's a waste of money. But it, like, it's still classic. It's it's still classic. Classic has those stupid things that exist. I think in, when they made Season of Discovery, they wanted to keep things still not bad, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Classic. Yeah. I, I know. I would have made him better. <laughs> that, that's my take on it. I wouldn't make them cheaper. I would make them as good as tier one, or I would put like a super good two piece on it. I would do something like that. Oh, like, I, I don't have, think I they have should beef with the price. two pieces. I have beef with the two set, the druid oh, boomkin oh, two set. Its oh, two oh. set is a hundred percent damage on thorns and a hundred percent duration on thorns. <laughs> 200. That's the ultimate. 200 percent damage. It? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 200 percent damage or whatever. You it's above the boost? thorns. What? Oh, I. I don't care about thorns. No one cares about thorns. You don't want to boost? No. Like you're boosting so easy, dude. Thorns, a thorns buff on a two set <laughs> it is, is a such weird. a slap in the face. And that's on the that. point five, huh? Not on the... No, oh, that's, that's, on the, one. that's on the Molten Core tier. Yeah. Oh, the... that was the old tier set, isn't it? I think the old tier one set was exactly that, which was also very yeah, stupid. I'm sure it was. Weird. But can we talk about the feral, the, uh, the feral Tank Druid set? How it's all like ice instead of like something else. Oh, the Have look of it? it yet? Yeah, it's like all ice. It's, it's like it's all blue. It's, all, it's weird. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> Same with the rest of Shaman. The rest of Shamas look so good. Um, well, I just like that the the zero point five set. When I bought the, I have like the resto set and I bought the Ellie set. And when they're all in my bags, like when I'm trying to swap, I wish they could have just been a little bit creative and named them a slightly different like set name instead of being like this because now just like I, I sometimes have four pieces on one set and four pieces of the others and I look and it tells me eight of eight and I'm like oh I'm good and then I realize I have four Ellie pieces on and four resto pieces on it's like just could you not have just put like the I don't know elemental fives or like the healing I, I just wish they did some sort of change there on the names because I, I my bags are always a mess it yeah, is when they are one mess of them with really the bags. Well, it's only us and Driz that get four sets. So welcome to the club. Yeah, it's a, it's. I have a 
first world problems all struggling with all the different bucks. sets to yeah to go through i have two I have sets eight. and it's a bitch yeah i have eight different sets sitting on my uh <laughs> on my bars right now so i can just swap whenever and i think wave in our guild um is using a very unique combination of like spell damage and tanking set so i know he he was using a couple different sets and i just crafted the uh the sky i think it's called the sky rider uh mace it has a chance on hit to blast elemental damage that's scaling with current spell power so if you have like a lot of spell powers enhanced this thing's supposed to just be a mega weapon um and they've been selling like hot cakes in this last week someone told me about it on the ellie discord and then i went and made a couple which was kind of risky because the price started to plummet like overnight the the markets are so volatile um right now that you kind of have to like gamble in mm-hmm. one direction and um <clears throat> i just know that uh i've been seeing some like 2200 numbers on on this mace which is really good i got lucky well it was a little bit of luck and a little bit of just remembering what happened back in 2019 but i was remembering what happened back in 2019 with the librum of uh veracity they were mm-hmm. they were literally selling for like one or two silver back in 2019. And then all of a sudden when everybody actually figured out everything, they were going for hundreds. And so I was like, well, we're going to need fire res and Librams of about two or three weeks ago, Librams of re- resilience were two gold a pop. I was just looking cause I was, I'm wanting so to, mad at myself oh, right now. What a yeah, play. I was wanting <laughs> to get one. some for myself, but I bought six for two for two gold a pop and sold them all for uh the lowest one i sold was 220 and the highest one i sold was 280 and i just basically got 1500 gold out of 12 gold oh, yeah, i missed out I, I didn't do any sort of like phase four investments i just kind of went in with whatever gold i had on my character i should have done more uh preparation because the whole guild was talking about like what's going to sell next phase and i just didn't listen I mean, to your to your point, there's some people who said that and didn't strike out. Right? I know Rogot said he was hoarding like something like 500 Arcanet bars or something like that, and he bought them all at like 40 to 60 gold or something, and then they plummeted to, I think at like 15 gold at one point. So he lost, I want to say, 700 to 1400 yeah. gold. You know what? So this some people, people did try to farming. Crack didn't didn't strike out well. <laughs> Honestly, and everyone was talking about like uh, GFPPs. I'm like, man, dude. It's a good idea to stock them, but I didn't think they were going to sell it all, so I never did, and they just never No, no, no. Anymore. You got it all wrong. The shadow protections, grape moss, okay? If you if you were smart last phase, you were hoarding that thing. Like, shadow protection posters, like, I don't think nobody expected it to be, like, so necessary in hit three. But, like, basically, you like, if you're going to do hit three, you need, like, a quadrillion of them, and they are so expensive. They are, like, what do you need 20 gold a stack. Great. Uh, Lucifron and, I think, Shashra. Yes. No, uh, there's a couple. Is, Shadra's Shadra's arcane. Arcane. You need the arcane. Yeah. Is it Gehennis? I know Lucy from for sure. No, Gehennis is not. I think you just need like five for Lucy. Um, I don't think there's shadow one. damage. Mm-hmm. Unless there's if a you don't wipe. <laughs> no, no. Major Domo. Domo's got shadow damage, yeah. so you need to do shadow strikes. Yeah, Grave yeah. Moss was a good investment. I, I did kind of a. Rather than investing in any one thing, I did like a spread. I just did the basics. Like I, I hoarded Mooncloth my Arcanet bars, um, and my Cured Hugged, Rugged Hides. Those, that was a good investment. So I hoarded a bunch of those, and I just had a stockpile. And I think on, like, I want to say, I don't know, day two or three, um, Hesik and our guild had the bag recipe, and I just turned all my Rugged Hides and all the rune cloth I got from leveling all into the 18-slot bags, and those just sold for, like, 50 to 60 gold, and I just unloaded Those, those bags are so nice. Yeah, those, I loaded, like, one 25 of, the, of them. One of the most under underestimated things about Sod right now, 18-slot bags being super accessible. Not yeah. super accessible. They're a little expensive. Like 30 gold. Like 35 it's, gold it's, right now. I think that's right the cheapest 18-slots ever been. It's yeah. so nice. Well, yeah, because in Sod or in Era, they used to be 2K each. I, yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm also sitting on about 200... Mm-hmm. Um, f- um, fire water because for some reason it went down to under a gold when everybody was leveling up and mm-hmm. I remember it being super cheap when everybody was leveling up in 2019 and then 
as time went on, it just it eventually became the most expensive con- consume if you were to consider that it only lasts 20 minutes. Like if you were to put it against a consume that lasts an hour, you'd have to, you know, times that by three. But so it became like the most expensive one and it, the price just keeps going up. So I'm just kind of sitting on them. So Wiggle, I, you I don't even, I don't even know what those are. <laughs> Huh? I talked the about fire waters. I talked winter about winterfall fire waters is like a melee consume. It grows you in size and it increases your AP strength. No, AP? it's AP AP because that's the reason you can use it along with giants. Um, yeah, so you can, it's like an extra consume for mongoose and giants that you can throw on. Yeah, that's why people. So it's a small min max, but it's I guess I just that. learned that the AP. arcane elixir stacks with the flask. I just mm-hmm. learned that this week. That? <laughs> Never knew that. I'm not the biggest like classic play. I played like classic in 2020 at the mm-hmm. end of AQ, beginning of Nax. And then I never really played classic outside of that. So, well, lucky for you. A lot of this content's new. Yeah, lucky for you. That must be fun. Ranged and heals have way less consumes. Melee has a ton. And if tanks are doing it right, they're doing melee and, uh, and defensive and consumes. consumes. A lot of gold. Yeah, 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 but you guys don't have to use dark runes, mana pots on cooldown. Yeah, Ellie you Shaman, dude, I can't. Yeah, you're good. I'm I'm ooming as an Ellie Shaman on like my third cast. It feels like I, yeah, I just like I just Ellie Shaman that. does. So I, mean, I, as, I, as time, I never run out of mana. Yeah, I, rest of shamans are the exact opposite. They're just mana batteries, and Ellie Shamans are just <laughs> mana sinks. It's just I got my mark like, of the dragon. I, dragon. Well, I know. I'm so. I I'm will pretty pissed that the only thing you get is a mark of the dragon. I'll give it to you that once things are on farm your consumes could possibly be more expensive because of dark crudes and everything else. And, you know, if you don't die, you don't lose the buffs. But, man, when you're losing the buffs and have to pop, you know, I mean, what if you don't, casters don't use fire water, casters don't use the strength pot, casters don't don't use mongoose. Casters, they're using the damage catchers that are using firepower, right? The sage, the, they're, they're using like, no, I think you can't use much. sage. No, no, because it doesn't stack with intellect and stamp buff. Yeah, what do I think the steel wisdom is the most expensive flask, isn't it? All the same thing, warriors, everything. So, but are are enhanced shamans also using spell power stuff? Possibly, for some sort of hybrid. Look at Rogue, I'm using spell power shit too. Like, are you using your spell power flask? Uh, I didn't last night, I used flask of titans because I didn't want to lose my world buffs, but. Um, on rag i'll probably be using uh you know tonight if we go back and do rag i'll spoilers for the mc discussion um i'll probably use flask of chromatic resistance instead but yeah for farm i'll be definitely using the uh the uh the spell power flask but yeah i use the arcane uh greater arcane potion i use the oil on my offhand because like, now only for mutilate build, only for poisons mutilate build. But you know, if I'm in backstab, I'm doing that because of dungeons and poisons just don't have time to do anything. So you know, I'm not. I'm using a sharpened stone or something in the offhand. But yeah, now there's an additional consume. Now shields have an oil that just came out as well. So now I've been having to buy. Mm-mm. Can you stack them with wow. the end chat? You can, huh? Yes, yeah, so you can do an oil on your main hand and an oil on your shield. So now can, I'm spending two times my reagents on. Can you link on. that to me? Yeah. Oh, I'm not even on. I haven't heard of all that. Logged up. You haven't heard of it? It's, it's, here, I'll link. It's There's from a, the... There's a shield in chat, too. Yeah, here, I'll, it's called um, Formula Conductive I heard Shield of that one, Coding. Yeah. I'll put it in chat here. Um, that's not, pretty I'm cool. Yeah, yeah the 55 healing is just insane. It gives you, while applied to target shield, it increases spell damage and healing by up to 24, last 30 minutes. Dang, I'll have almost 800 healing. I feel yeah. That's a whole lot. Well, yeah, I, I don't have bag space for two oils. I don't have bag space. I, know, I was dude, really struggling I'm, last night. I'm running so with all 18 slots, and I'm just running out of room constantly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had I to put 18 slots stuff. in my bank because I had three sets sitting in the bank of gear. Yeah, so. fire risk struggle. Yeah, Sucks, plus bro. holding my fire res and all my pots and 
yeah, it's like one bag consumes, one bag of fire resist, one bag of gear, then one bag of all your class stuff. It leaves you like, I don't know, eight slots in your main in your yeah. main bag to to juggle new loot. And I got the, loot, I got the to, plus four for my authenticator. Dude, I was oh, farming man. the dark iron and I had to throw it to random people in the group because I was like, I'm gonna have to destroy it. I can't. And dark iron's so good. Dark iron's going up in price. You can turn it in for rep. You can turn it into bars. Yeah, um, bars are expensive. Yeah. Every the the market's pretty rough. Fire bloom is for this. You need it for the shield now, and you need it for the firepower. That's going. That's going way up. Um, and anytime I feel like I get a little ahead of it, someone in our guild is just buying out the whole base. I can't. I will say that I bought out all the Arcanet. I think yes, or two days ago, and I reset the whole price. So I'm kind of part of the problem as well. But <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I bought all the 39s to so like 45 Arcanet bars, and there was like five left. And I was like, I know someone's just gonna buy five and just rechuck them at 60 or something. Like Dude, that. being in Swamp always makes me feel like I'm way behind. But in the grand scheme of things, I have to think about me as opposed to the entire player base. I'm way ahead of the vast majority of people, oh, but yeah. Swap's just full of these tryhards and streamers and content They yell creators. at me. They are really mean. Yeah. <laughs> get sweaty oh, or get out. Get out of the kitchen if you can't take the heat. All right. So what's, <laughs> uh, we've kind of been talking about it, but what's everybody just been up to besides Molten Core? We can just uh, start with lubes and just move, you know, I'll move across. I leveled my this? second Boomkin. Second Boomkin is up to level 60. Nice. He is, I'm not doing the 0.5 a quest again because <laughs> screw that. Also and another 800 gold for sub park. Yeah, ne never going to do that. But like, I don't know. I'm at the point where I don't know how to gear this guy because all I did on my main one was just run dungeons until I got the 0.5 stuff. So maybe I just like kind of schmooze my way into a molten core pug. And see what I can get out of it. That new dungeon is That's pretty sick do. for gear, man. That new oh, dungeon. The DFC? Yeah, oh, has yeah. a bunch it's of good sweet. shit. Like, I got these I think boots it's a fun dungeon, just too. Like, they might be better than the last tier boss one. is pretty hard. I like it. Yeah, the. What is, what's the guy's name? He hits like uh, a drum. Yeah, he smacked our tank one around and it, he was. It was bad. But, like. That was me. That was me. No, 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 no. It was a level 57. This guy was a oh. stinker. He's like, oh, I can tank this. Dude was getting smacked around. It was terrible. Yeah, he did that but yeah, I got my two Boomkins up. I have a third one, level 50. That one might take a little bit to get to 60, but I'm enjoying it. Boomkin feels super fun. Nice, nice. I and hate two sets. San, what have you been doing? And I'm going to step away. I can still hear, but just when San's done, Van, you can just jump right in and do yours if I'm not back. For sure, bro. Well, basically right now, I am on the eternal quest to get a Libra and more Resilience. Because I wanted to get like the, I got my tier one pens and I would be like, I don't want to be like the one guy that gets a pens and doesn't get the 25 res on it. Even though I don't really care that much for it because I got like 35 res on my other set, but thought I might as well keep that one. And it turns out it's like a whole adventure that takes like a day. I, I thought you would just go there and pay for it and you will get it. But like I whispered to this guy and he said, no, you got to come to Burning Steps. And I'm like... I'm not going to burn the steps. I'm going to get it myself. And it turns out you got to do like a quest in Ungoro that takes like forever. You got to get like 40 power crystals or something. Then you got to go to BRD. So I, I am in that process right now. It sucks. I didn't know it was that go. long of a process. It's Dude, a long wait a process. second. You didn't play in 2019 then? Or at least you didn't min max. Huh? I, I fucking sucked. At it. I mean, I played a rest of uh, it. Okay. So I only did. I didn't uh, really need fire rest. I did the liver in and 2019. Back in nobody gave a shit. I did the Librum of Rapidity, and I did the Librum of, 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 of Veracity. Oh, um, and, but uh, I, uh, I did, uh, like, the Librum of Constitution in TBC on my level 29 Twinks. Because in TBC, Oof. it still worked. So you'd get, uh, you know, 100 health, you know, on a... Uh, on a, uh, or whatever it was, was it 200 health? I don't know, but it basically would make my level 25s just monsters in, uh, in or 29s, monsters in Twink PGs. So that was pretty fun, but I only got to do that. They only made the change to where you'd queue with everybody else, like basically, cause they changed it in 2019 classic to where Twinks would queue up against Twinks and it just made it so you didn't even want to Twink. Then they changed it back 
like during pre patch of Wrath. So I just during pre patch, you know, basically just played my tweaks forever and they were awesome. But then the enchant goes red whenever you, uh, whenever we went to actual, um, um, whenever we went to the actual, uh, wrath so battleground but yeah they all have a little like thing you do uh librum the casters bell like always does librum of um focus that requires like two uh of those skins you get from scolo skin of shadow or something like um the liberals of constitution i believe require uh some of the blood from eastern plague lands the ones that spawn those two unkillable blood fucking mobs yeah blood of yep. heroes it instantly 60 seconds slow you man that's the worst yeah. running into them when someone, somebody unkillable. picks it and you don't know and you're just running by and they just oh, smack dude. you off yeah, your mouth they freaking <laughs> they stunned they knock you down they uh Love they, you. they put a snare on that lasts like i don't 30 seconds it's like a long ass snare uh, yeah, they're th they were the bane of everybody in um, hard in hardcore. But yeah, the we've been doing those every time I got a new pants or head in 2019 classic. I'd have to go Librum of Veracity, and I'd have to grab. I think it was was it Whipper Root Tubers? I think it was for that one Whipper Root Tubers in Fellwood, oh. and then a couple of the crystals, and then you go and turn it in at the pylon, one of the pylons, but. Yeah, well, those all really have a little adventure. Out. Yeah, and then you—I haven't touched any of the librums yet. I don't even oh, know no. about them. Don't. That's the only way you can get pants and head enchants if you don't want to use the armor Just kits. Have yeah. someone do it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd be looking at the librum of focus, I believe. I think it's, I think it's just Space spell power. Spell power. Or you can just go stats too. You can get int. I don't know what your classes yeah. priorities yeah. are. Uh, yeah. uh, int, int, int. Yeah. Yeah. And Liberums of Resilience are twenty, are Prior twenty res. fire res to pants and helm. They're, I mean, they're they're pretty huge. So, yeah, I'll put that on my checklist to do. It's the worst experience of of enchants <laughs> for sure. He's a, he's a druid. He could get out of it. It's fine. All right. So, then what have you been up to? Um, I just been boosting people. Having fun playing new games. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Daisy. I don't know. Well, you were AV, right? Of... You weren't you talked yeah, to us I'd... about you were dominating AV. Yeah, I was, I was running uh, AV with Sony and Fear and all of them. That was fun. The Black Rock Mountain events. Just trying to get ready for raid tonight. Uh, Heat three is going to be. I'm not ready for it. Are you guys doing Heat three? Yeah, I think so. In knife in the knife party. No, I'm not going with Knife Party. Oh. I'm okay. going with, uh, with Hero. Yeah, Knife Party already ran. Lubes ran in his. And they did yeah, Heat 2. We ended up not doing Heat 2. Oh, okay. We ended up just doing Heat 1 and going right through. We had like five people that didn't have enough res. So yeah. we said, screw it. I'm not gonna, we're not going to fight it. I'm planning on... I'm still planning on Heat 1, but I'll do Heat 2 if everybody that comes to my raid comes prepared. But it's going to be required for a week from Wednesday to have at least enough res for Heat 2. So, Yeah, I've got 200 unbuffed already, so, and I could have even more if I put some enchant on some pieces. But, yeah, other than that, I haven't been doing much. Just uh, making new connections, meeting a bunch of people. Uh, it's been pretty cool. So good deal, good yeah, deal. Perfect. And what about you? Yes, yes, way. Um, I was at a conference uh last week from Sunday to Thursday, right after the game came out. So I've been playing kind of catch up where I got my epic mount, I did the 0 0.5 quest, I've been getting a ton of reels, I've just been doing like world tours each day. Um, just trying to get all the stuff right now. I'm trying to craft the Corehound belt. And get them at fire enchant so I could be at 226. I'd like to try a heat three. I don't know if week two or week three I'll be able to find a group that, that needs somebody, but um that's kind of like on my list just to keep prepping for that. I mean there's what what can't you do in this game? There always feels like something. Um I'm trying to get all my I got all my professions to three hundred on my 
on my alts, and then I'll probably start to level one or two of my alts to 60, but I don't think I'm ready for that kind of grind right now. I'm a little burnt out of all the 0 0.5 questing and dungeons. Yeah. That was like, it's not like that. It was, it was 800 for the mount. Luckily, I had almost all the materials for the 0.5 quest. I only had to buy like 100 or 200 gold, I think, of materials. So I, I don't even think it was that expensive, but I just found myself broke. And now I've just been kind of farming my gold back up so I can buy enchants. And um, I finally feel like I stabilized a little bit and I still have a decent amount of materials. But um, I think in classic, I don't have anything against people who have like seven accounts who just pump out moon cloth like every day. It's good for them <laughs> for the whole week. But I'm working um, on I'm working on two <laughs> different characters right now doing that. Uh, I don't have anything against it. It feels like a little bit like cheating because it's like maybe just spend that money and just buy gold. I don't know. I, I but um, I have, you know, I did learn from some people from Vanilla from Classic. So I have like an alt who is doing the who's an alchemist and I have an alt who's a tailor and alt who's a leather worker just so I can get the main things pumping. And that's been pretty much generating all the money I need. Um, I got a little broke after enchanting all my gear, hoping to get into um, you know, Bobka and Maui's group one, yeah. which was unfortunate because right. there were some people who they didn't even some people, I guess, weren't honest or it was a miscommunication on how much fire resist they had. And I went out and I did all the hard stuff to get the Librams and all that. And I I didn't equip it because I was like, I'm not going to put them on until I know what the roster is. But I was at, you know, 230 or 235. And I was like, you know, I felt like I spent a decent amount of work to get there. Then some people were short and getting blown up. So I was like, man, that's that's a bummer to see. But um but that was kind of an adventure in itself just to get all the fire gear. I don't know how people don't have 100 if you just did dungeons and you just hit need on the pieces that dropped. I feel like you can get to 100 in like a couple dungeons. Easily. I think a like, lot of yeah. people BRD didn't know. Full of that stuff. I, I feel like didn't a lot of people just it. didn't know that they would that they would need it. Um, I know we think about it because we play a ton. But I mean, we're mm -hmm. we're definitely the exception, you know. I saw a bunch of new pieces with fire resist dropping and I just went, uh oh, that's like that can't be a good sign. Like Blizzard's going to throw something at us with some fire resist here if if they're really if it's a pretty abundant. And I knew Thorium Brotherhood rep when I saw that the dailies, I assumed they were going to give Hydraxian rep because they didn't want people to, to do the Silithus grind. But when I saw them giving Thorium rep, I went, there's only one thing that means when you get Thorium rep, it's, you know, it's crafting fire resist gear. So so, yeah, you, maybe you're right. Maybe I did have like a little bit preemptive knowledge to prepare for myself but yeah because everybody right in 2019 didn't need it at all like i came in uh being mm -hmm. like a like i don't know if you know a lot about me but i was like top one per percent back in actual 2005 you know which doesn't say a lot to be honest because we were so dumb in so many things when i came back to classic 2019 i was i thought you meant I was you played be, a lot of wow that's what it meant i meant yeah i thought that i was gonna be like this <laughs> cool guy that knew everything but it turned out the private server crowd found out everything but uh but back then we all had to have a a fire res set and you know it wasn't until way later that we started running Adi and Rag and different things without Fire Res on. So when they said Fire Res was going to come back, I knew I was going to have to kind of look for these things. But a lot of people probably just thought, oh, the tank is just going to need that just like in 2019. And lots of people don't research. They hear from their guild. They, you know, they don't check Wowhead. So, yeah, I think it's gonna take a little bit of time for everybody to get it through their head that this is very important i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna doubt that bwl is gonna need high fire res as well you got fire maw that does a ticking buff that does every stack it gives you or flame buff it gives you increased fire damage every five well, seconds I, I think for what they've shown us so far the entirety of season of discovery is going to require now even aq in 2019 until we were geared enough, we were using a lot of a lot of yeah, nature was, yeah. resistance, it and then same like with Nax. Without it. Yeah, Nax. same with Nax Frost. So I think I'll never just forget the AQ. The rest of it like that. The AQ nature res sets all looked so dumb. <laughs> they were like and level when, forty items and shit. Yeah, I just remember warriors wearing this dumb green helmet because they had like a stupid amount of nature res, and it was still like a decent helm. 
but they looked so dumb and i thought that was so funny and it was like so much of a classic thing yeah now you just run through you don't even take any nature res you just go um only black uh black smoke and chat we're gonna get to that in one second uh let's uh all right well let's go ahead and move on to (sighs) bobby we need to have a talk about this world of warcraft classic do i look like i know what a wow token is all right so i don't know where to start i guess we there's three of us here for my red me san san and 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 yes way ran last night um i was thrown off completely uh i know all the fights from 2019 classic in in molten core and I had not seen any any coverage on any, you know, heat level one. And we decided to do heat level one. We had a lot of people that, you know, are slower and just don't have as much time in that raid. So I assumed, and I, you know, I was made an ass out of you and me, but I assumed it was going to be exactly MC from 2019. And then heat level two and three were going to be some, which I never did any some and didn't know the changes. I mean, I had heard about them, but didn't like know. And so luckily, yes way was, was um, there in our, in our raid to like help explain the, how the, the mechanics changed in some, but I was a little disappointed that I would have rather had it just be the MC, not, some like the actual one and then it you know when you go up to the heat levels then it changes because i was expecting that so but now that i know i'm going through and watching all of the like heat level three guides just because the mechanics are going to be pretty much the same besides the extra fire damage so but it's just i came in completely unprepared to raid lead because of that and that sucks that was my fault for assuming but i didn't know anybody who'd done heat one so i didn't know what to do so that was where we like messed up there but for the most part it was really easy but then the hard part was us constantly getting summoned luckily we had three people that went and you know yes way took his lock out to you know, uh, to us, Sharad, we had two clickers go out there. So luckily we were able to summon, but it still was a lot of back and forth. And only three people ended up being able to get a douse, you know, unless we would have trash, like trash farmed for longer. So that was a bummer. And uh, yeah, that's, I don't know. What do you guys think about, like, what about our, our raid? Like it, we sputtered out on, on rag. We didn't wear any any fire res at the start, the first one, and then we did fine, got through transition, and then ended up uh, wiping. And then we didn't have our world buffs, and yeah, that was a problem on rag. And I guess even on heat one, you need fire res on rag, which was interesting to me. Uh, I guess that happened in Psalm too, but I didn't know that, you know. Also about the dagger breaking, like you, you like, unless you get through the fight really fast, it's like your 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 freaking uh, melee's uh, weapons break, and we didn't have a a repair bot to you know an extra one to put down. It was there was a lot of things that were um a mess, but I don't know how did you guys feel about it. Same I think it was, it was fine. Like, have we got, like, am I muted? No, no, you, you scared me for a minute. I, I think it was fine. I mean, two more pulls and we would have got it. Of course, it, it went out too late. Like, it, it was just a quintessence difference. That's it. Quintessence diff. Yeah, That's it. it. We would have got, like, time. five more quintessences and it would have gone down. It's, just, it's not a big deal. We're going to get down in two pulls tonight. Yeah, we were, like, really close. And now we're going to have boons again. Yep. I, unfortunately, old, like, I'm 1,500 from from honor doing the whole run so i'm gonna need to tuesday go in and do a trash farm hopefully people are still running those and then i could just do like they are good money, one or yeah. two runs so and then days. i'll be good all right i yeah, could that's join what, like a group 1300 i could join a group 20, for minutes. the yeah 
the what's it called? But I feel like I'd rather take a chance at rolling on some of the loot in there, you know, some of the cores and stuff. Because also what I'm doing with my raid is keeping all of the mats. We didn't have a we didn't have a 315 skitter, which was a bummer. And I just let the people who mind keep the the uh, the dark iron for this time. But basically all that stuff is being kept on a completely separate character. It's going to be completely for the the raid, like repair bots. Uh, tank consumes if they need help because that's a lot of money, you know, those types of deals. And then for people that are regulars, you know, mats for them to get different, uh, different mats they need to craft things. Um, so I'm keeping it completely separate, but I'm probably I'm probably selling this entire first round of mats because they're just absurdly overpriced, and it'll give us a ton of gold to buy all the extra crap that we need during the raid, repair bots, and yada yada. So, yeah. But see, I know there's a great site that can help you get any of the gold that you need. So, yeah, don't use it. I mean, like, don't use it though. This is what I think most like, you Me know, how? more casual guilds will be doing in the beginning is just getting their 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 raid bank filled up so they can get all this extra stuff because you can't expect people to just bring a you know bring a a you know a thirty gold you know repair bot you know like and you know f you know flasks for the tanks you know if they need to switch out different types of of um, flasks you know different stuff like that. you don't you don't think so no you you definitely don't like twenty five res is like gonna be way more stats than what you can get on titans like you will be trolling if you uh, swap a piece of gear to get more res instead of going for the chromatic res one mm -hmm. like mathematically it doesn't make any sense. To have the more health, yeah. yeah like the the you are sacrificing way more tanking stats to like changing a piece of gear for twenty five more fire rest and just getting the flask. You don't need stam if your fire resist is high enough to mitigate the damage yeah. because it's not like you're taking physical damage. You're only the only damage you're really receiving would be the instant fire. Yeah, yeah. So by preventing that, bosses. the healers can keep you up. I mean, our healers are. I feel like healing has been pretty imbalanced in all the phases where it's been they've been i think stronger their power level sh than they should have been i mean look at priests in phase one right in bfd like they were just insane um they were like solo healing it so i feel that this game has kind of given the benefit of the healers to be super strong so yeah if you have just the resistance the healer should be able to keep you up and keep their sustain um especially on just if we're just looking at rag right yeah it's just fire protection and it's just i think in phase in um heat one i think you probably just need 50 fire resist will probably hold you out i don't think you really need more than that but i'm sure the more you have the better uh, i ran yeah, I, think, I, I ran heat one with zero fire res zero on my gear but you were ranged, except so you weren't tanking or oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah i am ranged yeah i think it's a little bit different for them i think they need probably double Something. i was ranged two and i didn't really yeah like you you saw Gedon with hit one if you got fire res cap like i took like almost no damage like i would take like a 900 swing every like three seconds and that was it well like some bosses with fire res are like easy mode lubes you probably did you guys have all of your uh all of your world buffs like did the majority of the raid have world buffs when you did rag because no. That's when shit went down bad for us. We did not. Rag. So we were, I unbooned right away on the first boss. And I kind of went after it, and then I died on a trash pack. We had a trash wipe right See, before Baron Geddon. I was Oof. booning trash. Like, I was booning during trash. Yeah, we booned our trash. Yeah, I, I, I did, I did not come move. prepared because the boon is now like a, what, a five-minute cooldown? Mm -hmm. yeah. I did not come prepared enough to reboon. I didn't even think about it. Which now, if you look at my bags right now, I have 15 <laughs> boons on both of my characters. I will never yep. forget that ever again. But like, no one had world buffs for Rag, and it Rag was a little bit of a struggle. Like, it, even on Heat One, it was we had a struggle time because now things were hitting sure hard. Goes, he for sure submerges too. Like we used to just beat out the sub the, the mm -hmm. submerge before. In That's a SOM thing, right? It's like a, it's a forced Single submerge. Phase. Yeah, you used to be able to DPS race it and just. And not even worry about it, but now there's there's dunks that you have to deal Overall, with. Overall, I am like super content with the difficulty of Molten Core. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I think there's something for everybody, you know. Yeah, yeah, it seems. I was actually part of me was pleasantly surprised that 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 we got stuck on rag, but another part of me was pretty upset that we didn't get the loot. But also, people didn't. I guess I should have probably let everybody know, but. You know, like they should have expected a four to five hour block for this first one just because of just because of douses, you know, but I didn't mm -hmm. I guess I didn't properly, re, you know, prepare a few of the people and they had to leave at about the three. My, and a half my group hour had mark. to have we had to have three or four people go out twice to get two sets of douses just so we could get through it. But that took a very long time. Yeah. That was a problem. Like we only got two pools or well, three pools technically, but with like two missing people on it. So it wasn't even like a real pool. Like how we had like two more pools and like cleaned up a little with the ass we would have got. It's just mm -hmm. a time thing. It wasn't a difficulty thing. Yeah. People were also, I think, a little drained. I think yeah, based on how were long we were there. So I mean, look at Maui's group. They took they spent eight hours. Ten. I don't know Ten how they did that, dude. No. They are insane. I know. Yeah. That was they got worried. Part of me was glad to not get into the it. group one because that seemed like such a train i would never sign mentally. up for that um but yeah i mean that's they so they were there twice as long as us right so you gotta just imagine doing our raid and then starting over and doing it again that's how long they would have been oh they did have one of the funniest breaks i've ever oh, seen the, oh yeah the, bomb? the, the, the <laughs> gordon <laughs> ramsay bug was hilarious that was uh, if we, were, we, so we were in our raid we were in our raid and I forgot who said everyone just started saying, go to Gordon Ramsay's stream, watch his stream. Yeah. I turned over, put it on my second monitor, and he was killing Thrall. He killed like, Thrall. What is going on? He killed so many I people. I was racing him on top of Thrall so he could kill everybody. It was fucking <laughs> hilarious. I go to my shaman and like, he, he, was, he was dying in ghost form. Did you know that it's possible in this game? Yeah. Yeah. It's the funniest. That was so the thing about the that one. Break. I saw him kill Thrall and Thrall had loot on him. And that made me think, since we're level 60, we can now raid the opposite faction It was faction just Copper, I looted it. I was in the party. It was oh. just what? It was just, it was copper. just copper, I looted it. Bummer. What if it dropped like a hundred fire res on a shirt? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be I always thought that world bosses should have like... Actually, they bubbles. should. Would be really? difficult they they and ironically should. Do. Yeah, someone killed the uh, the ZG boss. Do you remember that? Like they were like the um, oh, that was so cool. The SDV Blood Moon boss. They were yeah. trying to like raid him and kill him, and they were super excited. It was just like joke loot. Like you made it here, but there's not actually. But I wouldn't have mind. It would be if cool they if they added something fun for killing the opposite faction leader. I don't know. It's like a it's a crazy part of level sixty a classic. It doesn't happen in retail, and it doesn't happen in Kata. It happens right. it's all like, the time. In retail. Mm -hmm. I never seen it then. There's a I must be missing out. So, so like you know that's such like... a cool thing about classic. You can just get eight thousand million of your friends and go raid this opposite faction city. Have these huge horde versus alliance battles. It's sick. Yeah, I think layering ruined that honestly. Yeah, um, layering I mean, Vanilla, that was like a. It made the bit way too impractical. Mm -hmm. in, in... Oh God, yes. Sir. I was gonna say just in Vanilla, there was there was a point and there was nothing to do. Like I mean, Molten Core wasn't <laughs> out. People were camping the gadget stand rooftops, right? And just ganking people and just griefing. That's all. I mean, there was a there was months of this game in which the only thing to do was how best can I grief the faction? So people were trying to organize raids to go raid the capital bosses and just it, there was no achievements there. It was just like, we just want to go do this and like shit talk people on the forums like we killed your boss. Like, where were you? <laughs> like, who are you defending? And that's that's all we did. I want to say there was like a month or two in 2004 or five that that's it was like, hey, we got to go organize this. And then people were trying to sell information to the other side. Like, hey, I know this guild's going to come wipe your boss on Saturday at like eight. Like, be ready. And then you'd see like an opposing 80 people sitting in Stormwind Keep, like waiting for it. It was a lot of dramas. And then that was like, that was what was fun. That was like, what was to do? I, think, I agree. I think, we'll, they I think we'll hit a point. We'll hit a point because at level 50 last phase, we were really out of things to do. And I remember there was this one group that really wanted to raid Stormwind. But you couldn't do it at 50. You just didn't have... Because the, no the, the guards would smack you around. You couldn't hit them. Yeah. And now that we're at 60, everyone's going to get to a point with Molten Core that they're done with it. They're going to run out of things to do. And then obviously the next phase is going to come out, whatever. But like, they're going to run out of things to do eventually. 
they're going to start coming up with some whack things that they're going to just figure out some crazy shit to do. It's going to be awesome to find out. Plus five resist all shirt. I would go raid. Oh my, I would do that immediately. That is on my Martin's Fury. Item Force guy. Oh my. Remember that joke? Oh, the red shirt? Yeah, like if you kill the king of Iron Force in retail, you get a red shirt because of the red shirt guy. Yeah, from you remember that? <laughs> yeah, that guy. That was funny. That's funny. What, if, what yeah. if that had fire res on it? It's a red shirt. Oh. But he's not in the game right now. Oh, is he not in vanilla? No. no. Damn. Never mind. Disregard. <laughs> well, do you guys like that they use the, the, the SOM mechanics, or would you have rather it been... The or the original board moon core. I'm happy that they I, did it. I would be. It's about honest. the same. I wish they would have done something different because we've like gone through yeah. classic. Yeah, like I challenge. wish they would have done something completely new. Like we're here to discover new stuff. Why are you gonna bring in old stuff, old content? Well, they bring. Like, yeah, you can discover I address a the chicken nugget meatball. in the room for a minute. <laughs> I th- yeah, that I was gonna go into side. that right now. We got into the same thing. Like they hyped these new boss, they wouldn't tell us what it was. No spoilers, guys. There's gonna be a secret new boss in Molten Core. We're so hyped. There's gonna be like a demon. It's gonna be like one guy from the lore. It's gonna be like the elemental lord from from Rato Lichkin. Maybe one of those uh, fire reverence from Rato Lichkin with the shield and the sword that are super cool. And we go there, and it's a flaming chicken nugget. It's <laughs> what the hell, Agren? It's literally a Molten Core. I don't get the what hate the on the hell? name. I think the name is kind of cool. It being the actual molten core, but it being I so I haven't done the fight. A literal molten man, core is the problem. <laughs> but seeing like a if there's like a second phase to it, that'd be cool. I don't know. I watched it happen and it was just like really uneventful. Cool. I think it was we to be we like killed a, a ball to the new expansion because that's going to be in the heart of the Black Rock Mountains. So I thought oh. someone said it was going to be a connection to that. And Still lame though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't actually watch the last fight yet. I was hoping to experience it firsthand, but no, I appreciate all the spoilers. Um, <laughs> like, all they had to do, all they had to do is get, like, one of those red spiders from Burning Steps, make it bigger, put it right there, maybe put some fire on it, and nobody would have complained. We wouldn't, it wasn't even that hard. I mean, even... Just take, like, a rock elemental and call him Ragnaros Jr. Even if it was the <laughs> same it. thing, it would have been cool if it was so hard that... People weren't getting it down until they had, you, you know, I'm for tier. like a week or two. Like that would have been great. I would love to see that, but for some reason they just don't put that in. I think they're afraid the classic sweaty player base is going to actually kill themselves trying to do it the first day. Well, I was talking to so someone else about this. <laughs> the the difficulty that the first night of Sunken Temple was. How Aranicus was like this huge brick wall that all the groups ran into because they didn't have gear, they didn't have runes, they didn't, they weren't prepared because they just leveled and went. I feel like that difficulty would have been perfect in this setting because people had so long to gear, so long to get all their stuff ready, right? I feel like if they put out something with that type of difficulty, that would have been sweet for this first week. So, better difficulty with the prep, rushing the content, you know, right away and then mm-hmm. making a wall not the right. They, they kind of reverse it that way. Yeah, I mean, I would have. I was hoping for more difficulty. I mean, we're we were in heat one, so I expected it to kind of go as we did. It was pretty much a cakewalk with yeah. world buffs. With, uh, with until rag, consumes. it was pretty easy. Everything. Yeah. Was. Um. Honestly, if we just had, if we had all of our world buffs and stuff, I think we would have one shot rag. I haven't done heat two, so I can't imagine. And heat three just it didn't look difficult. It just looked like you needed two hundred and fifty fire resist unbuffed, like with gear. And it seemed pretty simple, but I, don't, I mean, I haven't done it yet, so I don't know. And it, it feels bad that it's not them making the raid harder. It's like you're bringing down the character to the raid instead of like needing to like have more skill and more gear. And you're ceiling. making the player weaker. Right. Well, there's there's a big yeah. thing. Uh, you could. It's really so. The min maxers are trying to use things like juju's and the shaman totem to get them to that mark. But what a lot of people might not, un- might not understand is that this isn't like a suggested uh, 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 fire res. I believe it's 227 for Heat 3. If you're under 227 at any time, you can get one shot by the, the mechanic. So Even it's trash. A- yeah, it's a one shot. It's, it's really stupid. And so, that should be like a strong dot or something. Well, so if you want to you know, be... 
if you want to be really safe, you actually just get the 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 fire res. Because if your juju runs out mid fight and you don't and you don't notice, boom, you're dead. If you get out of range for any reason from your chamois totem, boom, you're dead. If your chamois dies, that entire group dies. You know, it's it's such a huge thing. So I think people should really be working towards just having their just having all of their stuff unbuffed, like having two, two, seven. I think that's the, it's 200 and something like 226, 226. Yeah. Yeah, just have that unbuffed. If you want to be super safe, people are saying you want to go 60 over that. So if you do fall out of the totem, you still have that 60 on top. So really what they're well, saying is the two, uh, 286. They don't, they don't want you to rely on the totem. They just want you to have magic res potions. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. You have chromatic your, flask. Yeah, having having a flask, chromatic flask works yeah. out fine. But I'm just saying, you just leave the juju and the totems for extra because it 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 does help. Like having even more does help. So you just have that as extra buffer. But then if you get out of range, your shaman dies, your pally dies, then boom, you're still okay. You know that would be my sig suggestion to most groups. Can I chime in on that one a minute? Sure. Yeah, I think like forcing your raid, like if we're talking like an actual tryhard, you know, like your Nolba raid, if you're like actual tryhard, forcing your raid to get 60 that they could have got from the totem is like hard griefing because that's like one and a half pieces of gear at the very least. And we're talking like pens with the enchant on them. So like if you're doing that, you're like griefing your DPS and your healing even more. And like, yeah, you got more fire res, but you're going to die. Now, the problem is not on the fire res. The problem is on like the stupidity of this mechanic being a one shot. All they had to do was make it like a super strong dot that kills you in, I don't know, five seconds because nobody is going to like, like heal through that dot. But if you go out to the totem for like a, a, a tick of the game, you're not going to die from it. That's what makes it dumb. Are you talking like, like how Saffron and Nax needed Frost Res, similar to that resistance requirement? So I know people well, talked about that, how that wasn't like a hard, you need this much resistance, but all the resistance that you could get would help, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean that would help too, but like I wouldn't mind if it, if it would kill classic. you like almost instantly, but it shouldn't be literally instantly because like you get knocked over and like for a split second you're out of the totem range or maybe the totem runs out for like a second on the shaman or something like that and you die. That's so stupid. Yeah, that is, like, maybe it been, stupid. Make it a dot. Maybe it should have been different. I just feel that you know that you shouldn't rely on that stuff like like now. You know that's. Like, that's all I'm saying, you know, unless if you're a super tryhard group, you're going to try to min max everything you're going to use you you're going to get just barely to the cap and then have everything else DPS. But I don't think that's what the majority of people should do when try to pro progress through, you know, the different heats. I think you should just have like for heat one, like what is it? 80 something. You should just have that unbuffed period. Like. That's how I yeah, feel. I think you want it. to take the previous the, or the next heat's level for the previous one. So in heat one, you want to just sit at 96 heat. And then in heat two, you probably wouldn't be sitting at 226. And then in heat three, you probably wouldn't be closer to 300. Is how I kind of viewed it just to be, if you want to go in with ease, like just in and out, minimum yeah. consumes, minimum time. I, mean, I don't That's see how I looked at it. Two going into at 226. That seems a bit excessive. I mean, yeah, I mean, the idea is it's excessive because all the melee won't die, right? The trash won't kill you. You'll just be, it won't you'll just be, be super buffed. I don't believe it'll be excessive once you get all of your tier one. All of your tier one gives quite a bit of that. And then, you know. I think people are using six piece tier one and then two pieces of your gear are like core hound belt or like core hound boots or something like that or like the cape. So, um what I've seen on, on a lot of uh, posts are yeah, people are just trying to pick like their six best pieces they want and then supplementing the rest with just like fire resist pieces just for molten core. Yeah, I, I, I think the whole de the whole design of this for the majority of people is to be like, OK, once you've done molten core, uh, you know, once you've done molten core heat one for a couple weeks then you should have enough gear from from molten core to then upgrade to two and then do that for a few weeks and then you should 
have everybody ready to go to tier three. Like that's because they put really good stats on the on the fire res stuff in molten core. So that's why, you know, that's why the natural prog will will I be I believe be that the majority of people get the majority of their fire res stuff from molten core. So I mean, think the about the shoulders and shit too. Fire res. Like all the tier set, at least I have two pieces of tier right now. Both of the pieces have t- 10 fire res on it. I believe some of them have even more than that. I believe- oh, I have helm and legs. They both have 10. They just have but like, 10? still, it's you're gonna have to to do heat three, you can't be fully geared. You, you just won't have enough. You're gonna have to give up some pieces. And it's kind of interesting to see what people are sacrificing. Like, is a trinket not worth it to them? Are rings not worth it to them? How do they balance around like their hit rating? It's kind of interesting to see how people gear around it. Well, then, and and then even for more casual raids, the progression works different for them. They'll do mm-hmm. you know heat one for four to five weeks, and then everybody will have enough tier one to be just fine in heat two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Without even going out in the the world and getting all the extra stuff. But I mean, also you have to think about you get a ton of resist. What is it? Boots, 20, fire res, a ring, also 20 fire res, and the cape enchant from Honored with uh, High Draxian. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's yes, a, that's right a there. huge jump right there for everybody, you know, and two full molten core runs, everybody will have Honored, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, but, I think they're trying to make it natural prog for the majority of people, but the tryhards can go out and get a lot of different stuff, liberal resilience, everything else. And then it's I good that you know, there's multiple avenues to the progression of it because it's hard to cater to. Like we were talking about how like the five of us we are mile not miles ahead, but we are much further ahead in progression than a lot of the player base. It's good that there's avenues for the people that want to sweat harder than us and the people that are just hitting sixty like yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. It's good that there's multiple avenues to progression. And I love. That heat two, heat two, everybody's gonna get to. I mean, but there's gonna be a lot of people that do not get to heat three ever, um, and I think that's fine because heat two gives you one extra piece per boss, which is awesome, and then heat three gives you cool cosmetics that change weapons. They don't change them completely. It's like recolors and you know, or cool. more uh, graphics to them and stuff like that, which. I think it's way cooler than transmog, you know? So you see somebody with a freaking crazy Perdition's blade, you're like, oh, he did heat three. He cool. means something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't give him any sort of, that's what I hate about retail, you know, that's, that all the gears gated, right? And so I think it's great that it'll be the same gear. It's just you have a shinier one because you're <laughs> cooler, you know? And I think that's cool. Oh, what if they made all like the heat level ones like a brown tint? <laughs> a wooden it made it made him look made him look terrible mm-hmm. but yeah you're bad at the game <laughs> but i i i think they did i think they did good you know with the mm-hmm. different heats and you know the, the a lot of the guilds that just care about gear because there are a lot of people that just care about gear they're going to be fine just doing heat to the entirety you know they're going to be like oh we're not going to do the other but i do think that legendaries drop from the last boss which is only available in tier three and then also you probably have more chances at hand of rag and uh probably have a higher chance to get a binding drop in heat three too so has anyone seen a binding on any character i have not i've seen a posted binding someone posted a binding uh yesterday i haven't seen one yet it's brutal i think jerome's raid got it really No, wow. did no. they? I don't think so. Bobka's group, I don't think they did. Yeah, Jerome was in the main swamp run. Yeah, I don't. There's no. They would have. That wouldn't have been like quiet. That would have been. Break you in secret for a couple weeks until we finish it, and then we'll let it. <laughs> we'll just, you're, gonna see, you're gonna see one of the guys with the Thunder Fury. Oh, how'd you get that? Oh, oh. 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 I just showed so up my so who, I got lucky. Who, who's Thunder Fury going to? Is it going to your? I think I, I I'd say I have to go to Bobka. But like what yeah. class? So it's it's not really. I think it like goes to warrior. I don't think nah. rogues are using daggers. I don't think they're using swords. 
Yeah. Maybe a rogue I, tank. I think, I think a rogue tank would probably want mm. Thunder Fury main oh, hand and so then cool. the fiery sword offhand. In the offhand, yeah, that would. Probably I did be see cool. a a tanking dagger drop off of Anixia. It had nineteen stamina. Oh, yeah, it. it was it was silly. A rogue DPS wanted so it from me, bro. My defense as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a the we I mean we haven't even touched on Anixia yet. Have you guys gone into Anixia? No, yeah, I it's pretty it easy. Like, random pug, two pulls, done. Yeah, but Pop you took can't 30 go into people. Anixia yet. Oh, I, okay. I just okay, like, uh... man. I don't fight fair. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I, so uh, I, I've, okay. I've done it on, with a couple groups, and I'm actually doing another group tonight. It's kind of not that easy. And it's honestly a little refreshing that it's not just a... Because I, I think it's all sound mechanics. It's, it's gotta be. Anixia if you was can't such get a out joke. Of the fire, like you used to be able to get out of the fire easy. It was just such a joke in every other version of the game, even in Wrath when they remade it. Like it's it's always been this pushover boss. You just oh, I gotta get my Nixia lockout in. Mm -hmm. But now it's like gotta there's gotta be some break. effort. There's like there's like effort behind it, and I like Anixia because Boomkin is like incredible with that fight. It just lines up with everything correctly. It's great. Sounds okay. like someone's got a class that's fun and they're having a great time. <laughs> hey, I'm having a great time too. Oh my! Yeah, shot. I'm not. Complaining Honestly, is anyone that. not enjoying their class right now? I feel like I haven't really Sanders, heard much huh? of Doom. Yeah, what do you mean? I am not. I'm a little pissed off about I am Melee so happy Hunter. About the I'll be. I'll be honest about that. Melee hunters should do more damage than ranged hunter. I said it. Shut the fuck up, hunters. <laughs> Melee well, should do melee more damage. Hey, more you're gonna right? upset Sarth. Yeah, they're uh, they're up in the shit. Like if if. I, but my whole reasoning is that for PvP, so, you know, a lot of people don't agree with me. But I think if you're melee, you should do more damage. Or else, if you do more damage as raised, why would you ever be melee? Yeah, why, why be up in like, the thick of things? If someone melee fought somebody who was ranged, the range would get off multiple attacks before the melee was able to attack. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the melee's attack should be more damage than, than the per-ranged attack. Is, is how that goes but also through. with the hunters, you're kind of stuck in a spot to where if you make melee good for three straight phases, no one's like the allure of the hunter is not really like a thing anymore. They, it's just they still seem rogue. comparable. It's just they're not, you know, you're kind of griefing your raid if you're going that instead of ranged. So, man, range hunters are smacking right now. Oh, man, I got ganked in. Anytime I see hunter now, they just they trap me. Shoot me, trap me instantly again, shoot me again, and I'm dead. I don't even get like a heal <laughs> off. And I think part of the problem is hunters historically have never um had a lot of diversity on loot. They've never they've always been denied tons of different roles. Now you add melee hunters, it's like now they literally will roll on every single piece of gear. Oh, that's like you drop in an well, instant. I will say melee hunters still slap it in PvP because mine's level 55. I'm doing two-handed because I like having trap launcher, so I I just use a two hander and it slaps in PvP. Like I'm killing level sixties as a level as a level fifty five hunter. That's sweet. And they all it's so funny too because everyone's ranged now, so they just come right in on me. I'm shooting them, you know, I'm shooting them, taking their mana as they get to me, or I'm you know putting the dot on them, you know, as they get to me. I'm doing a little bit of damage. And then they get right up on me, and then they're like, this is when they realize they fucked up. <laughs> you know, and I just mm -hmm. hammer them, dude. Like, like the two-hander hits so hard. So, but, yeah. As long as it's good in PvP, I'll raid ranged. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll raid. I raided melee all of last phase just because raids wasn't that much better. The only problem was I was griefing by not having... Uh, by not having um true shot true shot but yeah but i went in bobka's more casual sunday raid and bobka was cool with it so i just stayed but i think i'm probably gonna have to switch to raised for raiding but as long as i can roll out of that out of fat two-hander i don't i i don't care i'll i'll mm -hmm. i'll do it i'll take that i don't think anybody else can use two-handers in a raid right now can they i think shamans not, Could. Not, yeah, not they swords, are dual wielding, aren't they? Not swords. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, there you go. You got you're you're opening right there. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, but yeah. people yeah. want to roll on it for PvP. You know, I'll still have to fight uh, for it. But I just want to have the opportunity in whatever raid I'm in, and then I'm fine going ranged. Because the gearing is pretty much the same. Like, we're not really looking towards strength anymore because we're going to be going full survival for PvP. So, for melee hunters, at least, for my build. Some people do like a half melee or a half survival, half marksman build, but dude, that edgy bonus and the health bonus way down there in the tree is just so good for Hunter. I don't know, man, for PvP, but yeah, um, for the most part, yeah, I think most of the classes feel great. Like, that was your question, Rudnick. Yeah, I mean, I've been snooping around the Discord, the class Discords, and trying to see if anyone's, like, really upset with the state of their class. The only people that I see kind of complaining are Arcane Mages. Mm -hmm. They're, like, really bad. I don't think they have a spot anywhere, but Fire's fine, so they they should just respec. Yeah, right. I mean, they're in a cast 22 where, like, if you make Arcane DPS too good, the healers are going to be, like, completely disgusting. It's That's very hard right. to balance for both. Well, also, I like the arcane broken mage. in PvP. Arcane mages are? Yeah, they'll like three shot you. Oh, really? The arcane surge is very broken. Oh, how about? Just... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So you just get two stacks of arcane blast, evil K, and arcane surge. You do 5.6k crits. Well, okay, so how do we feel about the. I know we haven't done Heat 3. But how do we feel about the Heat 3 difficulty? Because it was interesting for me. I was watching the Maui raid about nine, nine hours in before they were, you know, almost done. And I was like, man, they're going to be so upset because, like, you know, they really wanted to have a good time and everything. And then find out that their long-ass clear was number 19 in the world and I think server first. I thought it was 15. Server I think first. it was Horde first, first at first. the very least. Horde first on server, our server. Horde first. Let me third check. NA, I, third NA Horde. And then, I thought it was 15th World, not 19. I was it 15th it World? Too. I could have sworn it was 15th. I thought it was 19th I think world. I posted it in general. Yeah, they like um, spam 15th. But so if that took that long, I mean, the difficulty is kind of good well, for that, you know? I wouldn't say it was because it was difficult. It's because people wanted to parse. So they weren't putting on fire res. So a lot of people were getting at each other because people want to parse on a prog raid, which is not what you're supposed to be doing. Nope. You're supposed to be doing mechanics, and it's the same thing that happened in Kata. People wanted to parse over prog while we're doing mechanics, and it kind of it sucked. But, yeah, they were 15th or 16th. Yep, I see Rip Bozo on Crusader Strike US, the so second on server, I think, or third on server, Polar. Then Rip Bozo, then first Horde. And I think uh, like the third Horde. I've been ganking uh, so many Polar members. It's been great. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. I do only good. see, so what, 39 people have cleared 11 out of 11, which is honestly, it's about to be the first full lockout. Not that's any. good, I think. Yeah, that's a difficult. That's, that's, I mean, I mean, that's pretty cool. It's, what was Sunken Temple after the first lockout, after all the nerfs? It's got to be a ton, right? Well, it's not a fair comparison because there wasn't an easier Sunken Temple. A lot of people that would have yeah. done Heat 3 just chose not to, you know? That is yep. fair. Good we'll point. have to see after, like, a full another week of Fire Res gathering. I think How next Tuesday, the... I think there's going to yeah. be a lot more. But still, 39 after one week is kind of... I mean, look at all the range that Noda brought. 12 ranged. Three That's healer, a... one tank, four melee. I wonder That's why. A... Well, because like... they're not standing and you're able to spread you're not, out. You don't, you're not you don't get that melee or a fire damage, right? If you're yeah. all ranged. Like, which boss would you Even want to Even though be they do quite a bit on? less damage than all of the. Like, melee still does the most damage. I think it was more about Hunter. safety than no. it was about. Yeah, it must have been. I think the only melee does more is enhanced shaman and then rogue. The Rogue rest is all casters. Yeah. So, and if it doesn't matter if you die because you get hit by a cleave or AOE mechanic from the boss. And your range like, also um, have like heals and and other versatility, mana, restore. See, 
Either even more reason that melee should be doing more damage. Say it I mean, rogues and enhancement shamans are at the top. I think warriors aren't that far behind. I mean, they no, are at the top. Very low. Warriors I haven't are seen it. Yeah, but like fast, the fire so. res is doing like changing the numbers. Like warriors the warrior is like the one cast that cannot have low gear, and they they are missing half their pieces because they are on fire resistance greens and crap. Right. It's not going to last. I wonder if they're going to add more fire res gear that is like raid comparable. I bet they I am that. so shocked that more like doesn't have fire like fire a, more fire res. You see the Thorium Brotherhood down. upgrades, right? You can I bet upgrade. they take it down to like 20, uh, 180. Because people, people compl- like will complain too much. People will say it's not fair that they can't do it because they don't have... They don't yeah, there are some classes that get like super gimped if they're not in gear. Yeah, you're right. Boomkin, yeah. Boomkin is one of them. If I lose hit and crit, I will not touch anything. And like Warriors without gear really sucks you know rogues without hit yeah, yeah you're right everything up there is casters except for rogue enhancement shambi is still below the two different marksmen and survival ranged hunters hunters are really strong just i think it's only because there's not many enhancement shamans that were taken in yeah mm-hmm. i think uh, i think noda took like four hunters and, and they cleared in two hours you also need to take this with a great assault because melee always traditionally scales better than than casters so i believe this chart will change as time goes on boomkins will be number one interesting mm-hmm. to see shadow priests up there we'll make a better like in the that. middle instead of way down below yeah like uh, the, I mean, at, so... at the heat level three when you're running with no gear what are the classes that don't need like don't need hit on their gear Hunters. The hunters. hunters. They only I mean, they need three percent. It's ridiculous. Um, I know mages don't really need the hit on their gear because they get hit from talents and their ring runes. Well, like don't. you're gonna bring those classes. They don't need the stats to do damage, right? That ones get three hit in talents. Uh, yeah, hunters. But casters need sixteen. So if you're only getting twelve percent from your, like for as a mage, you get six percent from talents, six percent from the two runes. You're still missing four percent. You're still gonna have a ten percent miss rate. Yeah, I, I have to get 10% hit from my gear. It's brutal if I have to swap into fire rows. And even yeah, then, it's not get... nearly as impactful as a melee, because if you're a rogue or a, or a feral druid or a, or a warrior, like if you miss a, an ability, that's one less combo point. That's a big mm-hmm. deal. Like if you're yeah, a warrior, you that's less rage. Well, but, you get, to rogue. but you get, yeah, you get the 6% on your rings, though. Like that. So I, 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 I get zero hit from any talents. Yeah, but it's, 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 yeah, you're going to be more. Bad for so you're going to need to get so like a two hit ring saying, or something. That's why you're saying you need ten percent on gear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, sixty yeah, percent gives you that one percent miss rate. Mm-hmm. But you got the like, rogues. They have, I think, they got to have sixty percent just to baseline it. Sixty percent, uh, uh, casting, casting, um, uh, spell hit is what we need. Eight percent, uh, melee hit. Eight percent. Yeah, we need the same uh, for. Uh, yeah, we need eight percent, just like anybody who's melee uh, to have wow. our our yellows hit uh, every time. They can still be dodged, parried, but you're not going to miss with eight percent. But then your white hits, both main hand and off hand, same for fury warriors or anybody who dual wields. Same with. Uh, uh, melee hunters that's 27 per uh per percent chance to miss rogues only need 16 percent spell hit because of poisons that's the only reason uh, it is kind of nice well not it's not yeah never mind in wrath you would get you would get more uh spell hit per point of hit rating than you would melee hit so it helped out a a little bit there, but rogues just use the six percent um, nature uh, rune right now. If you're doing the poison build, so you only have to hit the you only have to hit ten percent hit, which is pretty easy for with the gear that's out there. But at the same time, though, in your talents, you only get five percent hit with weapons, not with weapons and magic attacks. But all the new gear they're putting in is 
is weapons and magic attacks. Does that make sense? Yeah, to all abilities and spells or whatever the verbiage is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what's crazy, because especially like playing era, like a rogue's hit cap was like 22%. And you never got that because if he's prioritized just hit rating, you didn't I think it's damage. 27% for is dual for dual for dual wielding. Yeah. yeah. But I think like, so. You never really got that high, even with the talents. It was no, but hard. that's only for white hits. For you know, yeah. sinister strike, mutilate, any move that you use, which is considered a yellow hit, that's only eight percent required. But you never hit that. But it was always easy to gear because, like a hunter going over eight percent, you know, you're just wasting every percent after that. Whereas a rogue or a fury warrior, it's not a great like stat to keep going higher but it does give you more than at least it's more race you know, yeah you get you you just get more out of it because you're not wasting the point you're having more white hits not miss so and then we can get into the whole weapon skill thing and glancing blows and that's a whole nother bit of now we're uh, now we're stuff. doing math i don't want to do all the yeah what it's, uh, uh, hit from point f from five weapon skill Three, uh, you get three percent hit for five weapon skill, but that's not the important part. The important part is you do more damage on glancing blows with. Uh, you want eight. You want eight. And skill. it also reduces the chance of dodge and parry from the boss. Don't forget about that. So it's like so much better. Is it, the is it dodge also? I knew it was parry. Yeah, I guess it would. I guess it would increase dodge. Yeah. Okay. It's like anti-defense skill. That's the way best way yeah. to compare it with defense skill gives you avoidance. Yeah, because whenever you uh, get parried, you take more damage on your weapons. So, kind of sucks. But... Oh, on reg. Yeah. And just overall, if you parry, you take more damage on your weapons. I compared didn't... to just getting baseline hits. I didn't know that. Yeah, but the weapon skill is almost completely necessary, at least five, because you can never stop glancing blows, but glancing blow will take, uh, without weapon skill, will take 40% uh, off of the damage you would have done. Having more weapon skill will reduce that number, increasing overall DPS. It's very, it's very complicated. We're not going to get into it here, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, but uh, what else do you guys have? What, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about for, for Molten Core? I think I complained enough. <laughs> There's got to be a first time. I can't say much. I, I haven't done the raid yet, so. I'm happy that they made it one uh, once a week. They had it at two to start with, and that was, like, Oof. absurd. So I'm happy they did that. I wish it was a little bit harder, or they did, like, a fourth level, maybe um i like i think we did okay in one bringing people who were like somewhat new and then some people who were over prepared i think it's kind of right where i want it to be and i like that they waited it two weeks out so people didn't have to play for 24 hours a day and and use pto to get off work just to be yeah in the first week so i think they've done a lot of th i think overall molten core has been a reflection of a lot of what they've done in south Sod, I've been happy with almost everything. Uh, 9 out of 10, 19 out of 20 things that they've done in Sod, I've been happy with all of it. Has there been some areas of improvement? Sure. Um, but for the most part, I'm having a blast. I like all the versatility in classes. I like the change. I like that people don't really know what to expect. It's actually kind of similar to how I felt in Vanilla when people didn't have everything solved like these private servers did. So you can't you can't prep everything and know what all your best in slot gear is, you know, day one to some degree and all the consumes and all that. It's a little bit of discovery. And that was kind of what made vanilla fun in the first place is that nobody knew what we were doing and to learn together and to trial and error and to figure things out and get these improvements. I'm having a fantastic time and a blast through all of Sod. And I had a lot of fun last night in Molten Core. I had a really fun experience with the group as well as um as the difficulties of the fights i would have preferred it to be harder but other than that i put a 9.5 out of 10 experience i haven't liked a single thing about sod i hated it all everything sucks <laughs> and no, i'm still I'm... playing 80 hours a week i don't get it <laughs> <laughs> it's addicting no like i hope they, i hope they don't do 
the fire resistance esque thing in the next raid. They will. Because I think you're gonna have players a bunch, though. Or players, shadow. Players really enjoy gearing up their character to then play the next raid, to then gear it up more, to then play the next raid better. And when you're forcing the player to be weaker, it doesn't feel that great, you know. I hope I hope they just make the raids more difficult next phase their next raid instead of making the players weaker. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Uh, give us time to prep, but then make it make a it high hard. ceiling. Yeah, yeah. To expand it. I think a lot of people do agree with you, Lubes, that you know, they don't want to put on the lower stuff, but I do like the fire resist sets. Like I do like you know, but I also like playing warrior in vanilla and you have a set for everything. So, you know, it's Play like, Warrior now, bro. Join the club. Oh no. Man, no. why do you have a hammer? I, I it's beat a mallet, the game on sorry. Warrior in twenty nineteen. I don't need to do anything else. I've got the tune to prove it sitting there on classic era. But yeah. I wanted to play more more classes, and there was no chance of that if I was gonna if I was gonna do Warrior again. Mm-hmm. But There's so much that goes into Warrior; it's kind of hilarious. I I just you like having the different suck. pieces. Nobody of notices. Gear. I like having the different sets. I think it's neat to min max the different sets too. But there are a lot of people that are in your boat, there, Lubes, that don't like that aspect of it. There, it is some very classic esque things to purposely not wear the best loot because it'll make your raid better yep and you will eventually yeah you know, eventually. i think out gear you know out gear the well no not with the way the you heat can't. levels were yeah you don't out gear it yeah never mind like uh, tier I'm one sure. i think total is 86 fire res am i mistaken in this i think the entire set for every class is 86 fire res so oh. you're like almost all the way there. Like if you mm-hmm. if you use the totem, which you should, it's like 86 plus like 60 from enchant and some trinkets and stuff, and you're there, right? Maybe. I'm not sure. Well, uh, see, uh, it's interesting. It's a whole brand new thing that's never been in classic before, and you know these damn classic gamers are going to min max every possible thing they can. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, have to see a what lot they do with it. Interesting things, I'm I'm sure coming up, but yeah, I think. Uh, I think, I think that'll kind of wrap us up for this this week. I'm gonna start wrapping us up, guys. Uh, okay, um, where's my where's my sheet? Okay, don't don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WC Reloaded. You can follow the Mash Those Buttons Network at the Mash Network. Uh, if you want to send us an email, it's wcrpodcast at gmail dot com. If you'd like to join the Discord, it's warcraftreloaded.com slash discord or if you want to get a rested xp guide it is warcraftreloaded.com slash rested xp or if you just want any of our links warcraftreloaded.com and you should be able to find everything there and yeah um lubes where can we find you twitch.tv slash i am lubes same thing on twitter that's awesome. pretty much all it is all right and san medina where can we find you San Medina on YouTube. It has an N on it before the M. Very important. <laughs> and what about you, Vendetta? Uh, Vendetta underscore underscore TV on Twitch. Right. And do you do any content or just you said you used to stream? There yeah, I'm yes Yesway way TV on Twitch. I'm Yesway TV on Twitter, but you can just find me at Yesway in game. I'm just here for the. I'm just enjoying the view as we go, you know, on the ride. Oh, yes, the journey, not the destination. Love it. It's Yes Way TV. Yes Way TV. That's me. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, we will see you next week. Bye bye. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for checking out Warcraft Reloaded Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. (laughs) 